I'm super excited to share this DIY project with you. I'll be transforming some new wooden paddles into a rustic looking guest book for a wedding. Stick around because that's coming right up. Hey, I'm Deanna, welcome to my studio. Friends of ours are getting married and they had this fantastic idea to turn an old paddle into a guest book at their wedding. I absolutely love this idea and I'm thrilled they asked me to help them create it. They searched locally for a used paddle that had some rustic charm, but unfortunately couldn't find anything that was just right. So instead, we've purchased a couple of new paddles that I will be transforming to suit their style. In this video, I will teach you the steps to create a rustic wood look, to adding a few painted stripes, some hand painted lettering, and so much more. So let's get started. The first step is to give the wood an aged appearance. It's so fresh and bright and clean, and I need to dirty it up a little bit to look more like barn wood or driftwood. These paddles are made of poplar handmade in Canada, and I'll leave links in the description box below to all of the products I'm working with today so you can find them if you'd like to recreate this project. Whenever I'm creating a rustic wood look with paints, I like to use multiple colors because when wood ages, there's always going to be variation in the color. I'm going to be working with chalk paint in a medium gray color. This is called French linen as well as using a water-based stain, a glaze, and this is in a cool brown tone. If you wanted a really rough look, you could start by beating up the wood a bit using hammers and nails to create dints and dings. I've done that before on past projects, but I'm going to skip that step on this one. So let's get right to applying the products. I've got a little bit of each product scooped out on my tray. You can see here that the stain is a little bit runnier. It's a semi-transparent product. Chalk paint is much thicker. It's more opaque when you put it on. So I'm going to add a little water to thin that out. I want the products to both be semi-transparent so I still see the wood going through when I apply them. I'll dip my brush in the product and then just start to paint it on in linear patches following the direction of the wood grain. Alternating between colors, just kind of randomly brushing it on and it's okay if they overlap. I like to work in sections at a time because this raw wood really soaks up the product quite quickly. Set my brush down and then I'll take a rag and just wipe to remove the excess product. And then just move on to the next section. Dip a little more product on the brush. Alternating between the colors. And if you want this section to be a little bit more variation, you could add a little water, thin the product even further and then go ahead and wipe it back. And then I'll just carry on up the handle. I finished applying my product to both sides of the paddles. As it dries, it'll lighten up a little bit as the moisture evaporates out, but this is pretty much the color that it's going to be. So I'm gonna leave these here to sit and dry before I move on to the next step. The paddles have been sitting for about an hour and they're now completely dry, so I'm ready to move on to step number two, which is the painted stripes. I'm going to be using some low tack painter's tape to mask off sections. And if you need help with spacing, you could always use a ruler to measure it out. And I've got a photo here of the design so I can reference it as I'm taping the stripes. Start by tearing off a piece of tape. Press it into the wood. 
and firmly press the edge where the paint is going to go. Because I want the design on both sides of the paddle, I'll flip it over and continue to press the tape on the back side. Because my stripes butt up against each other, I'm going to be doing this in stages. For now, I'm just masking off every other section. I'm all finished masking stage one. Once I got going, I very quickly realized that these handcrafted paddles are not perfectly even, which is part of their rustic charm, but it did make it a little bit tricky to get the tape even. I wanted both of the paddles to have the same pattern, so it did take a bit of time to try and line them up. In the end, they're not going to be identical, but pretty darn close. Now, I'm not going to worry too much if a line is wobbly or a little paint does bleed underneath, because I will be distressing, wearing away some of the paint later on to give it a little bit more of a rustic feel. So for now, I'm good to go with painting my first colors. I'll be starting with the spaces here in between the tape. Once that dries, I'll switch the tape over and paint the alternate sections. I'm going to be painting in the details with chalk paint. I'll be starting off with two colors. I've got some graphite and old white already scooped out here on my tray and a couple of little brushes. Now as I'm going, I'm going to push down the tape edge once more just to make sure it's nice and sealed. And to help prevent bleed through, there's a couple of different options. When I'm brushing, I can do a pouncing or a tapping motion. Or if I do want to brush back and forth, I'll just go along the tape edge. If you go back and forth the tape edge, sometimes it causes the paint to press underneath. And that's the bleed through of the paint that we're trying to avoid. Dip your brush into the paint and you can tap a little of the excess off so there's not too much on the brush. And then just start with the first section. Rub down the tape edge. And again, with a pouncing or a soft back and forth motion, start to paint in the color. I'd like these colors to be just a little bit more solid, so I'm going to go ahead and do another layer of paint. The paint dried really quickly. By the time I was finished the second paddle, the first one was already dry, and so I'm ready to head right into that second coat. The second coat was also dried to the touch within 30 minutes, but I let it sit a little bit longer because I wanted to make sure that it was dry all the way through. I'm going to be moving the tape over and some of that will be overlapping this painted section. So if you go too soon, there's a risk that it'll peel the paint and I didn't want that to happen. I've got two more stripes to paint on each paddle. One is going right here above the white stripe and the other will land right in between the graphite and old white. It's going to be this lovely teal color that I've mixed up. It's a combination of Napoleonic blue and Amsterdam green chalk paint and I've created this color to match some of their bridal party colors. I'll start by masking off my sections again when using the low tack painter's tape and then I'll move on to painting. And to add a little bit of tonal variation, I'm going to dry brush on some Napoleonic blue just right on top of these sections. I'll just go ahead and peel the tape right now while the paint is still wet. The longer it sits on 
a painted surface, the more chance it has to lift that paint. So I like to get it off right away. I finished painting the stripes and now I'm ready to add the custom lettering. If you had a stencil cutting machine, you could cut a piece of vinyl and use that to put the stencil on, but not everyone has one of those machines. So I wanted to show you an option that was a little bit more accessible. I'm going to be using just a computer printed image and doing some hand lettering. Freehand painting lettering can be a little bit intimidating, so I personally like to start with an outline. I open up a word processing document, type in my letters, adjust the font and size to fit my project, and then just print it out on a regular piece of computer paper. I've got my design here cut into two pieces, one for each of the paddles, and I've just sized it about four inches wide to fit the space. And I've cut it out here just to make it a little easier to see the design and line it up on the paddle. Using a graphite stick or even just a regular pencil, flip the paper over so the back side is facing up and then take the graphite and just shade completely the entire back side of the paper. You could also shade the back with white chalk if you are working on a really dark surface. Then take the paper and flip it back over and align it up. Once you have your alignment, take some painter's tape and tack it into place. So the next step is to take a ballpoint pen or something with a sturdy tip and then just trace the contours of your design. You'll want to trace both sides of the letter and press firmly. As you're doing that, the graphite on the back side of the paper is going to transfer onto the paddle. And depending on how hard you push, you might get a slight impression from your pen. Once you finish tracing all of the contours, you can pull away your paper to reveal the outline. Since my lettering has a lot of thin lines and curves, I'm chosen a small round pointed brush to paint in my lettering and I'm going to be using old white. It's the same white color that I used here in chalk paint for the stripes. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to the paint to thin it ever so slightly and that's going to help it to flow a little better on my brush. Because I'm right handed I'm going to start on the left side and paint my way to the right side so that my hands not rubbing in any wet paint. Also while I'm painting I'm going to keep my hand grounded so either on the paddle or on the table and that way it gives me a bit more control. It's so much easier to control with your hand grounded than all loose in the air. It's much more wobbly. Get a little bit of paint onto the tips of the bristle. Just start with a little. You can always add more as you go. Too much paint and you might make a heavy blob, which I'm trying to avoid. Grounding my hand on the paddle and I'll just start to fill in the outline. I usually do one thin pass and then I like to come back and add second pass to thicken up the areas that are a little broader. Dip more paint on your brush as you need it. And just like the stripes, this might require a second layer, so don't worry if it's not super solid right at this point. The hand lettering is now complete and it took about 20 minutes per paddle to get that done. Some areas did need a second coat, but because I'm going to be distressing it, I kept that in mind and I wasn't too worried if everything wasn't 100% opaque. My next step is to lightly sand away some of the paint, giving it more of a distressed or rustic look, and then I'll be finishing this project by applying a sealer. Using light pressure and my fine grit sandpaper, I'll wear away some of the paint, trying not to wear all the way through the stain back to the bare wood, but if it does happen, I've got some more stain and I can always add more, so no stress just a lot of fun. It 
If you're interested in learning more about chalk paint and all about distressing chalk paint, you'll want to check out my video on that topic. I'll leave the link in the description box below. You may have noticed that as I was sanding, the paint got a little scratched up and dusty looking. I'm going to use a damp paper towel and just clean up again some of this excess paint dust before I move on to sealing. I've chosen General Finishes Flat Out Flat for my top coat. I love these line of products. They're easy to use and quick drying. And I thought the flat sheen suited the rustic look. Dip your brush into the top coat, wipe away the excess, and just brush on long linear strokes following the wood grain. Try not to overwork the product. Back and forth a couple of times is okay. And just watch for any drips or runs that might happen on the edges. I'm starting with the back side. I'll let it dry a little bit and then when it's dry, I'll flip it over and do a layer on the front side. Here are the completed paddles. There's lots of room here for friends and family to sign their names right on these paddles. And that was the whole idea behind this project. Rather than using a traditional guest book that often gets put away after the wedding, these paddles will be hung on the wall as a decor item that can be enjoyed every day. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this tutorial and click the thumbs up if you liked the results. If you're interested in learning more fun DIY techniques like this project, consider subscribing to my channel and remember to click the notification bell as well because that's how you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. See you back here next time.